Well, we know this Bigfoot creature can climb. What can't it do? There it is. Oh, he's fast. I just made out a giant shadowy furball. I thought I saw his tail. It looked like it was striped. Come on. I should call Chris and Koki. Tell them it's a climber and seems to have a striped tail. I think it's coming from inside the Cretera. <gasps> Clue number five? The eight-eyed creature can drive? Huh? <laughs> Guy! No! We found the big-footed creature. It climbs, has a striped tail, and we're sneaking up on it right now. We got something here, too. The eight-eyed creature's inside the Cretera. Our creature is a, a, it's a, a, raccoons! A, a giant, giant raccoon! raccoon. Actually, three baby raccoons, each with two eyes. And there's Jimmy's controller. But it's an eight-eyed creature. Where are the other two eyes? I bet the giant raccoon is their mother. She must be. But she's huge! How'd she get so big? The raccoon must have fiddled with the miniaturizer controls. That's possible. With their finger-like hands, raccoons are masters at holding and grabbing. They can even open all sorts of latches and locks. We gotta check out our clue list. Wow, the eight eyes and the giant feet really threw us. If it weren't for those things, we probably would have guessed it. Yeah, so let's see. Omnivore. Raccoons definitely eat both animals like crayfish and plants like berries. Great climbers. That explains all the scratching noise we heard. Don't forget about the grabby hands. Raccoons can catch food by feeling for it. Smarts. That along with the grabby hands and these guys can figure out how to get into anything. And that classic striped tail. By the way, love the mask, too. What's that for? It helps them with their night vision and prevents glare. Well, you really had us stumped, Mama Raccoon. Hey, speaking of Mama Raccoon, how are we going to get her back to the Tortuga so we can make her normal size and reunite her with her kids? Well, one thing we know about raccoons is they're excellent mothers. Oh, yeah. So we know she'll definitely come back for them. But when? And we need a way to get her into the miniaturizer. Well, she may just need a little bait. Wait a sec. Why don't I like the sound of that? Whoa! Chris, what are you doing? Oh, today's the day! We're getting that honeybee footage we always wanted. Oh, he won the coin toss, so he gets to do the filming. While I stand guard and make sure nothing goes wrong. Well, I always like to see my miniaturizer put to good use. Oh, this will be good, all right. The ultimate super close-up of exactly what a bee does inside these flowers. <laughs> What's it like in there, Chris? Oh, it's amazing! Like a forest of stamens. Stamens? What are those? They're these long stalks with the yellowish-orange stuff on top. That yellowish-orangey stuff is... Oh! oh. <laughs> Pollen! <laughs> wow, they're sticky. They have to be to... Chris, incoming! Ah, all set! He's a honeybee! Kind of cute little guy. You call that cute? Oh, you may not be cute, but you are beautiful. A beautiful beast. <gasps> Be st Beast! Ha <laughs> ha! Let's call her Beast! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Who needs seatbelts when you got a sticky pollen seat to sit on? Are you getting that nectar drinking, Chris? Huh? Oh, yeah. Drink it up, beast. Wow. That pollen is sticking all over her furry face. I know how you feel, beast. Pollen sticks to everything. Whoa! <laughs> Chris, you're like a giant pollen grain. Ha! Cool. But I'll just hop off in case you... <laughs> I'm stuck. Stuck? Hold still, beast. I'm just gonna give my brother a hand. Well, a couple fingers anyway. Uh-oh. I had a feeling you were ready for takeoff! What? 
This mission is going berserk. Follow that bee. Do you hear footsteps? <laughs> okay, Toke. We're gonna have to remember that the surface the gecko walks on is totally 3D. They can walk anywhere. On any surface. But how do they do it? The answer is right there in her feet. Do you think she'll let us have a look? Well, the Toke is one of the toughest geckos, but I think I can keep her entertained. Oh. Okay, Toke, cooler than your average reptile friend of mine. You want to hear a joke? Okay, what do you call a lizard who sings? A reptile! <laughs> huh? What? Wait, that was a joke. What? Frogs sing, toads sing, but lizards don't sing. Except the gecko. Oh, the gecko is the only kind of lizard in the world that makes musical sounds. <laughs> okay, Toke. 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 This is astonishing. A gecko has toe pads with tiny microscopic features called CT, like hairs, in clumps. It's like there are hundreds of tiny toothbrushes on each toe pad. And they have an electric charge. Chris, can you grab me a plate of glass? Sure. Toke. 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 <gasps> when the toe pad touches a surface, these millions of tiny electric charges attract to the tiny electric charges in the surface. An attraction strong enough to keep the gecko on the surface. And the power in a single toe pad is phenomenal. The power charge meter is pegged to 11. Hey. But if they're so powerful, how does the gecko ever lift his feet? Wait a second. There's something very different about gecko feet. Our fingers bend this way, but the geckos bend the other way. When the gecko bends her toe that way, the toe pad begins to peel off and the electric charges are turned off. Charge on, charge off, charge on, charge off. And that's how a gecko can lift her feet so she can run upside down on a surface. That's it. We've figured out the secret of the, the gecko, gecko effect. Keep her busy, Martin, and I'll get this power programmed for the creature power suits. Okay with me if it's okay with okay to okay. Oh, it's amazing all the things you learn when you take the time to talk to a gecko. What? A gecko washes its own eyeball with her tongue? Oh, now that's way cooler than blinking. Way bleh. <laughs> way... I wish I could do that. Have you ever had something in your eye and couldn't get it out? If you had this gecko power, you could lick it out. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> A moose is on the loose! Okay, so let me get this straight. So the wolf pack was starting to surround you. Hey! Was he with the pack then? No, at four weeks, he's too young to go on the hunt. Well, he's attacking my controller! Come on, Jimmy, his teeth are just coming in. He's got to try him out on something. Well, all the adult wolf teeth were already in. I didn't want any of the big dogs trying those out on my moose behind. So, I knew before they closed the circle around me, I had to do something. Chris, deactivate! Get out of that moose suit! Well, hooves don't work that way! Well, then work them the way they work! Run! Sometimes these creature power suits are too... creaturey! But remember, a moose can't outrun a pack of wolves for long. 
You'll have to think of something else soon! <sighs> Can't run anymore. Think of something else. <gasps> Antlers. Could they be the weapon against wolves? Antlers work on one wolf. Uh, uh oh, but not on a pack, because moose only have antlers on one end, and wolves can surround a moose and attack from all ends. Uh. Hmm. Ooh. But a moose can swim. Yeah. Chris, are you okay? What are you doing? The Moosey Paddle. The Moosey Paddle? <laughs> Good one, bro, the Moosey Paddle. Oh, come on, guys, give me a little rest. Chris, while you cool off, I'll track the pack. Wait up! Oh, no, moose hooves. How am I gonna deactivate with moose hooves? Oh, brother, here comes trouble. Make that three troubles. Don't move. How about I just do this? Quilber, come back. Look at that confidence. He's stomping his feet and rattling his tail to tell them he's coming through, whether they're there or not. Yeah, he's saying, don't mess with me or you might get hurt. Those quills aren't only defense, but they talk too. Whoa, when you have a defense like that, creatures listen. Ooh, that young lion better be careful. A porcupine can't shoot his quills, but those quills are so loosely attached that just a touch is all it takes to get a pawful or face full of quills. Amazing, it's a spiny backwards charge. Now that's an impressive move. The best defense is a good offense. Ooh, ouch! Oh, now that's the quill defense in action. Amazing hair that can keep lions at bay. Ooh, and that young lion is lucky he just got a pawful because a quill in the wrong part of the chest or face can even kill a lion. There goes a great defender. Wait, he can't go. We need more quills, and we've got to keep up with him if we're going to get more at the den. I've got a rope and an idea. <laughs> uh, we're with him. Nice day for a stroll. There he goes. Follow that bat. While the kids are snoozing, the bats are cruising. <laughs> oh, yeah. Woo! I love bat power. Good one. Hey, did you notice something about bite size, Martin? He's not catching mosquitoes anymore. Hey, he must be full, because if insects are abundant, a little brown bat can fill his belly in the first two hours after the sun goes down. Right yard, bro. A brown bat can eat as many as 3,000 mosquitoes each night, and almost all of that happens right after the sun goes down. Speaking of going down, Bite Size is heading straight for that pond. He's drinking on the fly. Gotta, Gotta try, try it. it. Uh, not that thirsty. <laughs> uh, it's more like this, bro. Little sips. Like that. <gasps> Whoa! Woohoo! <laughs> uh, you were saying, bro? Whew! Bite Size is a perfect name. It's a dangerous world out here for little brown bats. Hmm. Maybe we should watch our backs with a little echolocation look around. Good idea, I'll give it a try. Something's bouncing back. <gasps> Rhododendron bush down low. Awesome. My turn. <clears throat> Oops. 
sorry, dude. Let me try that this way. Oh. It's working. There's a tree trunk and a branch and... <gasps> An owl! A screech owl! Fly, 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 fly! Ah! Ooh! Follow bite size! Ah! Ah! Another close one! Tell me about it. Oh, here it is. The cleaning station. That's it? That's the cleaning station? There's nothing there. And what's the little Remora doodle sticky head doing? Oh, he's just waiting for a ride. A Remora swims around like that until he finds a new shark to hitch on to. Incoming shark. Oh, oh, and she's a big one. Looks about five and a half meters. That's the largest predatory fish in the ocean, right there. But what is she there for? What gets cleaned at these cleaning station doohickeys anyway? She does. Yeah, check it out. And he's the guy that does the cleaning. Well, him and his buddies. Cleaner fish! Hmm. Oh, and she's pulling into the station. The body position. It's telling the cleaner as, please clean me. I may be a shark, but I won't bite, promise. And the fish version of a dentist says, no problem, that's what I do. They're picking parasites from the shark's teeth and mouth. For them, it's food, so it's a good deal. Sharks, rays, and all kinds of fish line up at these cleaning stations. Suckerhead's making his move. He's on! We better get in there. Okay, here we go. Hey, Sharky. Sharky? Uh, how about Razor Mouth? Look at those teeth. Yeah, well, whatever. Sharky, Razor Mouth, just go easy on us, big girl. Just want to find out more about you. Whoa, you can see new rows of teeth coming in behind the old ones. Oh, yeah, those teeth never stop coming. We only have two sets of teeth and that's it. Sharks, just keep growing them. Uh, and look, sharks get loose teeth too. What? Got it. Wow. They're serrated with those super sharp ridges on the edges, just like a saw. Those teeth are serious slicers and dicers. Chris, look out. We're drifting. Oh no, a current. It's pulling us off course. Yeah, and on course to be her main course. I hope she's not hungry. If she is, we're about to be shark bait. Whoa. Please don't close your mouth. Please don't close your mouth. Uh, woo. Close one. Time to meet this mission head on. Engaging head sucker place. Steady. Steady. We're about to make contact. Three, two, one. Yes, we've landed. The first successful mission onto a great white shark in the history of creature adventuring. Yay, we did it! Mission control to Remora Sub. Well done, guys. Woohoo! Oh, yeah, we're, we're stuck, stuck on, on shark. sharks! No, oh, there's gotta be another bird of paradise around here somewhere. <sighs> that didn't take long. Listen. It's the superb bird of paradise. He's calling out to the female to let her know he's about to do his courting dance. Oh, the superb might not be the most colorful bird of paradise, but this guy has talent. He can sing and dance. Oh, and he's about to put on a show for the female to prove he's healthy and strong. The show's about to start. I'm sure he can teach us a few cool dance moves. Whoa, look what he can do with his feathers. He's dancing circles around her. Wow, with a huge blue happy face. That's impressive. I'm gonna name him Smiley because of his big blue smile. Oh, there goes the female. Guess she thought Smiley needed more practice. I gotta try some of those moves. What? Oh, nice trip. See you next fall. Oh, 
Oh, that's harder than it looks. <laughs> hey, Aviva, did you see Smiley dance? Sure did, but I still don't think I can dance like that. I'll stick to the stuff I know I'm good at, like making a bird of paradise disc for your creature power suits. I collected these beautiful feathers outside the Tortuga. Cool. Over and out. Hmm. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Hey, Aviva. Hmm? You okay? Fine, Koki. <laughs> Just bumped into something. <laughs> Or my feet bumped into each other. Dancing just isn't my thing. <sighs> Good luck, Chris. Okay, googly eye, I'm ready to learn tree leaping from the master. Whoa, the spring in your legs is unbelievable. It's the long legs, isn't it? They're longer than your body. Okay, let's do this, googly eye. So you use those frog-like legs to leap off the branch like this. Yeah. I did it! I love this vertical clinging and leaping. I'm ready for more. Farther! Yeah. Farther! Yeah. Farther! Yeah. Uh oh! Well, human legs definitely can't leap as far as a tarsier leg. Uh oh! Gotta break his fall. Chris, Vine coming at ya! Oh, yes! Oh, thanks, bro. That was gonna... Oh. Hurt. Oh. I'm good with the leaping for now. What's the next Tarzir tradition? Well, it looks like they're getting ready for something really important. Everyone is leaving Home Tree, even Googly Jr. We're right behind you, Googly Eye. <laughs> Wow, she really does look like a dinosaur. Yeah, and some dinosaurs had feathers, too. Yeah, when you're looking at a raptor, you are looking at the direct descendants of hunting dinosaurs. Hmm. He found something. Yeah, trouble. And his name is Black Mamba. That's the kind of snack surprise you don't want to find in your lunch bag. Unless, of course, you're a hunter bird. Mamba can't get a bite on his skinny legs. Plus, they're covered with hard scales that protect them from the fangs. And there are talons on the feet. And the hunter bird uses those talons to stomp snakes. Yeah, stomp. <laughs> That's stomp's specialty. Stomp is an incredible snake predator. Whoa! Oh, that was totally prehistoric. Raptors rock! Okay, I'm in on this raptor roundup. Me too. Even though they're like living dinosaurs, they're too cool to be afraid of. And they must have all sorts of amazing creature powers. Great, that's one raptor found and only 320 to go. Oh, uh, that's how many species of raptor there are in the world. 320. Well, check this out. Our hunter bird has led us right to a few more. A chanting goshawk. Peregrine falcon. A spotted eagle owl. A whitehead vulture. And a martial eagle. Let's confirm they're all raptors. Curved sharp bills? Check. Check. Eyes on front of head for hunting? Check. Check. Talons? Check. Check. Well, <laughs> When the raptors round themselves up for a drink at a water hole, a raptor roundup is a breeze. I like the owl the best. The eagle can eat me. Falcons are my fave. What the heck? Huh? Hmm. It's Gourmand. <laughs> what a move! Go, Stomp, go! Get out of here! Yoo-hoo! Gotcha! Oh, but he got the rest! <laughs> Oh, were you wondering which raptor to have for dinner? When I've tasted them all, I'll let you know. <laughs> Uh-oh. Gourmand! What's he up to now? Don't know for sure, but I bet it involves barbecuing our raptors. Guys, get the Tortuga ready for takeoff. Come on, Chris. We'll track Gourmand. 